Hi, this is Megan, and I am setting up an edge to edge on my Pro Stitcher simulator. Uh, this is how I do every single design. I rarely, if ever, set up a design on my Pro Stitcher tablets. Everything is always done on my laptop. Um, I do use a uh, Surface Pro products. So, anyway, first thing I'm going to do is pick out a design, and this is in the Pro Stitcher designs that come with your system. I'm going to use Rose Garden. There we go. Open. And first thing I do with every single design is I resize it. Um, this design comes in at uh, nine and a nine point five one inches high, and the width is fourteen point three eight. This is also available at the top of your screen up here. I always work with my height because I'm dependent upon my throat space. Um, so I want to make sure that I get the right size for my quilt as well as my throat space. Um, I can turn on my grid to see how big my flowers are. Um, I'm going to go ahead and change this to eight inches tall. And my lock aspect is on, which means it changes the height and width appropriately in proportion. So I turn my grid back off because I don't really like to see my grid. That's a personal choice. All right. Um, next thing I'm going to do is put up my area. This is the size um, that I want to quilt. So if my quilt is 40 by 50, I'm going to put two corner. And I'm going to go ahead over here to the right and say 41. Enter by 51, which is an inch bigger on each side. And I can hit my refresh button. The refresh will always bring into play your crosshairs. Mine are green because I'm in a simulator mode. My design as well as my area. So if you can't find your crosshairs, hit your refresh button. All right, so I did resize my design, so I'm going to baseline it. That holds the change, which is the size, um, so I can make subsequent changes, which is, um, at this point, it's repeat. I can hit the word fill, which fills up to, but not overfill, the design. It just gets me going and started. I'm going to then go to my horizontal and add another one. I'm going to, um, because this design chops off the outside, I want this end outside and this start outside. So I'm going to actually do one more just for kicks and giggles. Okay. Um, I rarely use stretch, but you can. What that does is it takes whatever you've got and uh, stretches the width or the height um, singly, just the, str just the width or just the height. I rarely use it, though, because I like my designs proportionate. Uh, I do sometimes, but very rarely. Vertical. I can add a design, and I can uh, snug up the gap. So if it's too far apart, you can snug your gap up. Now, P to P doesn't really work for vertical. And for horizontal, it usually is already there. But if you feel like it, you can touch that. Okay. It's already on. Okay. So once I've got my design to look nice the way I want it, if I am concerned about where things touch or don't touch, I can zoom in to see that my rows, I've got bits that are about a half an inch apart. Um, if I feel like I want it a little bit closer together, I can uh, snug them up just a little bit more. Look at my design, it looks pretty. I'm gonna baseline it. And then I'm gonna go to modify and crop outside, have it sew my edges. Once I baseline, I can't move it, but since I haven't baselined, I can move the design still. So I want to move it so I get the most out of the first design. There we go. And I've cropped off all the bits. I kind of want to make sure that um, everything is filled all the way down. This one seems to have a little bit of an empty spot, so I can either move it down just a little bit there we go. That looks a little bit better, even though I know that that last inch is going to be cropped off. Um, how much extra do you need to add? It's really dependent upon you and your machine. Keep track of what you put in 
so that at the end of your quilt, you don't end up with too much quilt and not enough design. Um, on my Avante, I usually add two inches on a big quilt and on my Forte, um, an inch, um, just in case the quilt uh, is less straight and I was less smart when I measured it. Once I've got the design exactly the way I want it, I'm gonna hit baseline and I'm gonna to go to file and save the selected. I don't save the workspace. You don't need the area, so you don't need to save it. Um, I save my designs in um, a folder called, oopsie, my designs, and I save them by month. So I can save Rose Garden, so I'm gonna just call this one video. Normally, I save it by my customer name. So this was Linda's, this was Chris's, this is Judy's. So I can save them by the specific design uh, for each person. Okay, I'm gonna hit clear all, and then I reopen it. Um, the reason I do that is that I find that it's just a much nicer design. Um, I can make sure that everything looks good. I've got my starts. Uh, the rows aren't connected. Occasionally when you crop, you can get connected rows with a long line in between them. I'm just making sure that everything looks good before it stitches. And then I can hit save, selected. And I can go to my jump drive and I can click on my jump drive and save it there. This happens to be my hard drive, so it doesn't want to save it there. So I'm going to hit cancel. Um, but it put in a jump drive, save it there, and then I can bring it right over to my machine when I'm um, for stitching. Um, you can also double check the stitch counts because you know that's what I love. Those of you who know me know I like to know all the numbers of everything. So this baby quilt is 40,856 stitches and it's gonna take an hour and 51 minutes. Now, that seems like a lot, so I'm gonna look at my Opti stitch. Now, oh, my speed is at 15. If I bump that up, normally I, I like to stitch in the 20s, in my acceleration and my speed in the 50s. So now if I hit my stitch stats, ah, 44 minutes, that's more like it. Uh, that's how I set up my design. Now, when I get to my machine, I'm going to hit clear all again. Um, wherever our crosshairs are, if I open up my design and my crosshairs and my design don't normally fit where I'm going to be. So move your crosshairs to the upper left hand corner of your quilt sandwich. And then you can go to modify, reposition, top left, and then once that, you can just bring your machine over to the right and see if you have enough design. If you don't have enough design, I can just put my machine at the edge of the existing design and I can move it over just a little bit. Oh, I need to make it bigger by 0.6 of an inch. I would never make it 0.57. Resize. I'm going to lock my aspect, change my width, to 41.6, enter, file, save, select it, because we always save before we stitch. Just make sure it's that, and save it over the existing file. And then I'm ready to stitch. Base down your edges, etc. And that's how I set up a design. Thanks for watching. Follow me, Best Quilter, at Facebook, Instagram, and Megan Best or Best Quilter at on YouTube.